energy of a nuclear fission reaction, the great amount of energy, uh, can be harnessed if the energy is slowly and continuously released under controlled conditions. So this is nuclear power in, that we get from a nuclear reactor. So the nuclear fission reaction generates a lot of heat, and controlling that heat um, is means that this reaction must be constantly cooled, uh, usually with water, lots of water. So that's why many nuclear power plants are placed next to uh, a large body of water that allows for using the large body of water, say it's an ocean, like the San Onofre in, uh, down near San Diego, or a river, or a lake. So this is water that is used to cool, and it is not at all exposed to what's going on inside the reactor. This is all, these pipes are all separate. So the same is true about the cooling water used in a coal-fired power plant or a natural gas-fired power plant. The cooling water is kept separate. It's uh, all separate systems, but it is uh, due to heat transfer because heat moves from something warmer to colder. This will um, warm up this cold water and this water just goes back into the ocean or the river or the lake. So the heat that's generated by this nuclear fission reaction is all, this is all happening in this reactor vessel. So this is what's slightly different is all of this on this side is exactly the same as a coal-fired power plant that you need to heat to boil water to generate steam to move a turbine to generate electricity for the grid. But what's different is what's under this containment structure. So that's why there's a giant um, dome. It's This is a giant containment structure to make sure that none of that's going on inside here, that it contains radioactive and um, sensitive materials, none of this can be accessed by the regular public. So the actual nuclear reactor is this small thing, what's going on in here is this reactor vessel. So that's where the fission reaction, the chain reaction is going on, and this is the nuclear reactor. And the whole thing, though, is the nuclear electric power plant. So um, let's look inside. So it's not a fossil fuel that's used. It's not coal that's being burned. It's uranium is the fuel source. And so this is a fuel rod showing a lot of nuclear fuel pellets. What these pellets are is that they contain uranium-238, which is the common isotope of uranium, and also uranium-235. Uranium-235 has to be isolated from lots of uranium-238, and that is processing of uranium that takes a lot of energy. This is called enriched uranium, uranium-235. It's what can be used for a nuclear reactor or a nuclear bomb. It's what when um, looking for weapons of mass destruction, they're looking for uranium-235. Individual little, little, you can see it's a small pellet. It's about the size of a dime. These are all stacked up in a fuel rod. And then you have a lot of these fuel rods um, all together in the fuel assembly. And so this nuclear fuel pellet is uranium-238 and uranium-235 isotopes all together as a solid pellet. And the reaction goes on inside this pellet. Now, what happens after the reaction is done, when all the uranium is used up, it, remember, it doesn't break up into a million atoms. It still looks exactly the same after it's done. It's just no longer the uranium atoms. They're different atoms, like krypton and barium and xenon, all different atoms, but still the same exact looking fuel pellet. It's still a solid. So you take all those fuel rods and you bunch them together and you have a fuel assembly. That's what this is, E. So this is the uranium fuel, uranium fuel, uranium fuel, uranium fuel. Part of what controls this is, this is A. This is the control rods. These are individual control rods, that's C. And A is the entire assembly, uh, absorb neutrons. Okay, so excess neutrons that can escape. These can absorb neutrons, and this is contained inside of the nuclear reactor. Okay, so what you have coming in and going out is coolant. So this is called primary coolant. This keeps all of this cooled off and this gets hot itself and then that's what goes on and is used to heat up water. Um, this is the whole nuclear reactor setup. Just takes on a small area of that containment dome. It's actually usually just at the very bottom. 
because they basically require a lot of space so that this cannot be breached. Like let's say there's not going to be a truck or airplane crashing into this uh, containment dome. So there's usually a lot of space, several stories, and uh, this nuclear reactor is just very one small part of it at the ground level. So there's additional water that's required to cool this primary coolant, and uh, you need a lot, so it's usually near a large body of water. This is the Diablo Canyon um, nuclear reactor. This is actually still active. It's in Avila Beach, and um, none of this water, I should mention, none of this ocean water is uh, comes into contact, and so none of it is radioactive, even though what goes on inside of the nuclear reactor, down inside there, is radioactive. So you can get a lot of energy. It has to be controlled, thanks to the control rods and the coolant and the whole system. Um, and this is, you can see, a um, nuclear plant near a river. So you have excess, you have tons of water that's used. And then this, again, is not smoke. It's water vapor used for cooling. Okay, so the water vapor is produced because of the cooling of that primary uh, reaction. So this generates a ton of electricity. It's the same exact electricity you can get from fossil fuels, but instead of burning um, coal or petroleum or methane, you um, don't have any carbon dioxide emission. You also don't have any air pollutants. This is used worldwide, the US, Europe, and Asia, and it's because it, because it can generate a lot of electricity.